let us make the assumption for the purposes of this video that this elbow is going through flexion okay so we're effectively lifting this dumbbell i say we didn't look anything like me sadly um we're lifting this dumbbell in the upward phase and it's flexion of the elbow okay so we just want to make that assumption as we make the progress we want to make here okay so that's on its way up now i want to introduce you to a word with that understood that word is the word agonist okay agonist sounds not a very nice word in some ways isn't it uh, agonist now the agonist muscle is the muscle that produces the movement Okay, so before I go any further, I'll encourage you just to pause or think, or maybe you know automatically what the muscle producing this movement is. And if you want to pause, do that now. But if not, let's actually address which muscle this is. Well, this is flexion at the elbow. And for that to happen, this muscle here inserts down here, actually onto the radius. And we could get quite technical. And it pulls in this direction and it brings the arm up like this, an elbow flexion. So in this case, the agonist is the bicep, right? It's the it's producing the movement that we are referring to here. But the ways that we can describe it are as the prime, there's an eye in there, by the way, a prime mover. And that kind of makes sense. It sort of does what it says on the tin, right? It's the, prime, it's the, cent it's the primary central mover uh, of this particular um, action and it's the working muscle now where this becomes interesting is that this can only be achieved with the support of other two types of muscles one of them in particular is important and that is what we describe as the antagonist now these terms are quite similar obviously the antagonist it means it's doing the opposite thing right so for for the bicep to be able to contract shorten and lift this this dumbbell to produce the movement another muscle has to relax and we sometimes say it works to counter okay so it works to counter. it kind of does the opposite thing and it relaxes so which muscle do you think it is which is relaxing to allow that to happen and of course it's this muscle here on the back of the arm the tricep which is effectively you know lengthening as this upwards movement is happening and that then allows this muscle to shorten now remember if this tricep which inserts down here by the way if it was to contract it would actually prevent this movement from happening it would prevent this flexion Okay, so it would actually pull the effectively pull the arm in this direction at the elbow, right? So of course it has to relax to allow this to happen. And finally, folks, I want to introduce you to the third role of muscles, and it's that of a fixator. And try and get into the or fixator. Okay, and fixators are really quite um, simple in their structures. They stabilize joints. Okay, they stabilize joints. Now, if you consider that in order for this elbow flexion to happen with this heavy dumbbell that elbow needs to remain stable and still and held in position now one of the muscles that does that is the deltoid muscle up here okay and what does it do it prevents unnecessary movement i always struggle with the word unnecessary how to spell it. it's double n double c single s unnecessary movement so it prevents unnecessary movement so imagine you're doing this up deep go and get in the gym and actually try it your deltoid will work just as that fixator and will prevent it so in the bicep coil it will be the deltoid now I include the pectorals here because some people also argue that the pectorals is involved in elbow movement as a fixator but we're going to focus primarily on the deltoid so just to confirm our agonist produces the movement, our antagonist relaxes during the movement, and our fixator stabilizes the joint and prevents unnecessary movement during. In this case, the bicep is the agonist, the tricep is the antagonist, and the deltoid is the fixator, and we'll come back to more examples in the next video.